six minutes for each free paper. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm here to present slit lamp photography of corneal ulcers to predict healing trajectories. I'm Dr. Preeti with my ratified membership number G2096, sir. Corneal ulcers are a leading cause of blindness in the developing countries, especially working adults. Ulcers vary depending on microbial morphology, <laughs> patient and environmental factors. Despite the wide variation, broad spectrum antibiotics are given to a lot of patients because ulcers require rapid intervention. We can change to targeted medication only days later and only if the culture results are conclusive. Currently, monitoring of ulcers is done qualitatively, which is subject to vari variability because uh, they measure dimensions of the ulcer. Uh, Computer-aided quantified automated measures have changed the way patients are managed in many diseases like keratoconus, macular degeneration, glaucoma, etc. Yet, a quantified algorithm doesn't exist for corneal ulcers, which if present would provide an earlier endpoint clinical measure for the impact of intervention. In fact, corneal ulcers provide an ideal disease for development of tools for their morphological analysis because of their rapid disease course and their short interval. Patients' potential outcomes could be distinguished if researchers address critical barriers in how we collect, measure and analyze these data. Uh, our project team consisted of uh, corneal specialists from Aravind Eye Hospital, Kellogg Eye Centre, Michigan and applied ophthalmic engineers from the Duke University. In order to achieve the long-term goal of predicting ulcer outcomes and to personalize treatments, our current objective of this study was to collect and create digital quantified measures of the ulcer characteristics. A sample of 50 cases recruited uh, uh, from Arvind Eye Hospital uh, at the Cornea Clinic was studied over a period of one year. Patients were stratified based on age and gender and the standard of care was the same in all of them. Any patient more than 18 years with a clinically significant untreated corneal ulcer of more than 1 mm in the greatest linear dimension as measured by the ophthalmologist was included in this study. They were excluded if they had no PL, prior corneal surgery, impending perforation or perforation and if they were pregnant. All the patients underwent slit lamp examination, corneal scrapings and serial slit lamp photographs in 10x and 16x magnification in white light and cobalt blue light in a Canon 7D camera mounted on a Hag Street slit lamp. Inner white to white measurement was done by anterior segment OCT. Health related quality of life was evaluated by Indian visual function questionnaire that consisted of 33 questions validated in English and Tamil along with an 8 question interval visit questionnaire. Quantitative corneal monitoring semi-automated software package which we have developed from the previous studies were used for image based analysis. Demographic information and patient risk factors were gathered. The height and width of epithelial defects, stromal infiltrate, presence of hypopion, degree of corneal thinning, depth of infiltrate and consolidation at the edges was noted. The average age of our cohort was 47 years with a predominance in males. Fungi contributed to the majority followed by culture negative cases and bacterial cases. The mean inner white to white was 9.5 mm. mm. At the initial presentation, the dimensions of the epithelial defect as measured by the ophthalmologist was on average lesser than the corresponding image-based measurements. Non-central ulcers contributed to 56%, hypopion was seen only in a third, depth of the ulcer was 37% at presentation. Mean standard deviation range and median for both the examiner and image-based measurements were calculated and scatter plots were used to assess the agreement in between them. Absolute differences between them were noted and tested for deviations by Wilcoxon signed rank tests. The percentage of absolute uh, measurements as well as the relative difference was very negligible between the ophthalmologist and image based measurements. A Kruskal Wallis H test showed that the height of epithelial defect measured by the ophthalmologist was statistically significant between the fungi, gram positive cocci, gram negative bacilli, and culture negative cases, but no other measurements differed between the organism type. While the general visual and psychosocial function were not different by the microbe type or the location of the ulcer, an overall impact was seen on the general function. This was, uh, this was how the fungal ulcer healed over a period of time. This is culture negative case and this is a bacterial corneal ulcer. A less sample size and measurement, imprecise measurement of ulcer dimensions during follow up was a limitation for this study. Uh, computerized studies like these need good consistent quality photographs which otherwise lead to variability. In future we aim to utilize, uh, we aim to create visualized ulcer trajectories with healing over time and statistical analysis will be done by linking this data to the host pathogen. For this we need a large sample size and a long term follow up and we aim to create user friendly uh, algorithms that predict heterogeneity of the patients in the long run and personalize corneal ulcer treatments at disease onset. 
So our central hypothesis is that by combining accurate corneal morphology measurements with host and pathogen characteristics, we'll effectively distinguish patient risk levels for visual disability and corneal transplantation at the disease onset. These are my references. Thank you.